difficult situation. Very, very. We've done our best. It's a hopeless situation. We've tried everything. So what do we do now? Talk to Park. We have to contact the family. Yeah, I think that the right thing to do is call them and tell them that it's all over. That's yes. nothing else we could do. Yes, I will do that right away. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. We yeah. tried our best. Yeah, I think we've done, yeah. Hello, Val. Hello. Oh, hi, Dr. Park. We've done everything we could. We don't know what else we could do. Doctor, please do something. Please save my boy. We've consulted with our team of physicians, but basically it's a dead issue. So? We wish we could, but there's no guarantee of a cure. We still haven't found a right match or donor. Really? Do you want to know what Dr. Park just said? Mm, yeah, what did you just say? Would you just stop what you're doing? Listen to me already? Hey, hey, easy! What's wrong with you? I can't continue living with a raging woman! Well, at least I'm a raging woman that cares about my family. I'm like you, a madman who's never here for his family! Crazy woman of mine, you can't stop nagging me and I'm getting sick and tired of it! Hi, Roland. Hi. Um, you asked me for the info file? Yes. Okay, it is in. This is the investigative report on the file. So, um, what's the conclusion? Um, it, it's your file. I'm waiting for your direction. So it's whatever you tell me to do on the file. Okay, I guess I have to give Mr. Hilford the call immediately. Joey, who's this? Lawyer Roland here. I'm calling from the Office of the State Prosecution. Lawyer Roland from the Office of State Prosecution? Mr. Hayford, I'm afraid things are not looking too good for you. The investigation is not in your favor, which means you might be charged for criminal negligence, meaning that your house and your vehicle might be impounded to recover the losses. What? Charged for criminal negligence? Impounding my vehicles and house to recover financial losses? Hello? Hello? Is anybody at the other end? Talk to me. James, get him the remotes over there. Okay. What are we doing this weekend, children? Hey, hey, mom. We are no longer kids any longer. At least I am no longer a kid anymore. You were my sucking baby 21 years ago. Now you're still here, even to tomorrow, Madam Bigger. Mom, wait, wait. The only person who ro remotely fits that description is your nine-year-old son over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Mom, mom. Yes, my dear. Are we okay? Yes, we're fine. I wrote something I'd like to give my friend who has stopped coming to school because of kidney problem. Did you just say your friend has kidney problem? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, your problem is skin problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. I think his friend must have been covered with measles. That's what uh, it uh, is. Uh, That's what uh, it is. Uh, no, no. You're like chicken pie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen everybody, stop. My baby boy, Mace is friend, has kidney problem. <laughs> everybody, listen. Listen to mommy's baby boy. 
Ruby, this is a get well note and I'm here to read it to you. If I have an extra kidney, I'll give you. If I have an extra lung, I will donate it if you require money. I will spare my lunch money, but I know the night may come sooner and I wish you a sunny day before nightfall with all my love, Emmanuel. Hey, mother, so sweet to feel. Come, my baby. Oh, who gave you the idea? My Sunday school teacher said that we should do something special for a friend. So I wrote a note I'd like to share with Steve. Wow, that's so sweet of my boy. Wow, that is fantastic. That's very good. Clap for my boy again. <laughs> that's very, very good. Very, very good of you. Mom, do you think our visit caused what happened to Steve? No way! Was it his sick before we got there? You're right, Mom. But I'm wondering if he'll ever survive. At this point, we can only hope and pray. Mom, I'd like to see him and his parents again. We don't know what is happening now. Possibly when we know what is going on, we don't know if he can make it. Make it to where? He's only been in a coma. He's not dead yet. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, children. I'm going to quickly remind us of what we learned today, which is the story of Lazarus. The story of Lazarus. Lazarus was a very good man who served God. But one day, everybody say one day. One day. Lazarus took ill and he died. And this made his sisters Mary and Martha very sad. And they began to cry and pray to God. And guess what? Jesus heard the story of Lazarus' death and he went to the house 
and he saw Mary and Martha weeping and he said wipe your tears everybody say wipe your tears wipe your tears say wipe your tears and Jesus went to the tomb and told them to open it and after he prayed he said Lazarus Lazarus and Lazarus came out and was walking majestically and everyone started praising God and giving thanks to God for his healing and his resurrection power the lesson of this story is that Jesus can raise the dead he can heal the sick and he can do any miracle whatsoever as we can see in the story he defeated death by the power of resurrection let's put our hands together for Jesus our mommy is going to give us a wonderful song so we can celebrate and even if he dies Jesus will raise him up. Right, Mom? My Sunday school teacher said Jesus is able to raise the dead. Yes, Emma, you are right. <clears throat> Jesus can raise the dead. He raised the son of the widow, Jairus' daughter, and even Lazarus. By the way, my brother, your uncle, said we should come visit him at work in the zone. Really? Uncle Philip wants me to visit? Yeah, not just you and your other siblings. I think we should invite Steve and his parents. They need some fresh air. Yes, Ima, if you say so. Oh, well, I have to inform my brother, so you expect more people. Thank you, Mom. Does that make you happy now? Is everything fine now? Come here, my son. Hi, who's next, please? Mr. and Mrs. Eva. Please step in. Good morning, Mr. Hayford. You're welcome. Hello. I am sick and tired of it all. I want to quit. The state prosecutor is pursuing me to take my car and liquidate my business and take our home. Our son is dying. I want to quit and leave everything behind. So leave everything and go where? That's all he keeps saying. He's a quitter. Always threatening to walk away from the marriage. With vows, suspend the judgment, and the lines respond. Nagging, yelling, and threatening. Making me feel inadequate. That's your trademark. Keep on blabbing. I'm ready to move somewhere far from her. As far as your shadow, let me tell you something. This defies distance. It's like a load strapped to your back. You need help to unload and offload. You can't run from your shadow. What you need is God. Oh, please, God? A dying, or should I say dead child? Dead business, dead marriage, and soon to even become homeless. And you are telling me I need God? Tell me something else! What about you, Mrs. Hayford? Hmm. I think his case has gone way too far into oblivion. His aggression, his threats, his anger. I, I honestly don't know what God can do for this far gone loose cannon. Did you hear that? Who's a far gone loose cannon now? Everyone please come down. Mrs. Aford, the question is, do you need God? Does Mrs. Val Aford need God? I see. I see. Does Mrs. Val Hayford need God? No. Mrs. Val Hayford does not need God. She needs somebody to knock sense into Mr. Joe Hayford's coconut head, period! Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you hear that? Do you understand what I've been living with? Alright, I'll calm down.
Severton okay? I'm going away for a while, maybe forever. But my wife said you are aware of the trip this morning with your son. Oh, by the way, I'm Sam. Mm -hmm. Sam Osifu. Your voice sounds familiar. Did you play for the high flying high soccer team? Mm, yes. We won the 1980 championship. Yes, I remember. Your name was called Smooth Sam. The way you cut through the opponent's defense. Do you remember Joe Rock of Defense in your team? Yes. Yes. Joe, the dean of the defense? I now remember vividly. <laughs> but you have changed. Oh, except your big beard. This is divine appointment. Jo, 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 Jo. The Dean of the Defense. <laughs> Come on, Come on. Thank you.
Emmanuel to bring his Sunday school teachers here today. He's told me about them and the good things they have taught him. So I asked him to meet my Sunday school teachers after our last conversation at the concert. So meet Mrs. Richardson Hello. and Hello. Mr. Bright. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Mom, Dad, at the concert the choir sang a song titled Consuming Fire. I asked Emmanuel if God's consuming fire and he said yes. This reminds me of what I heard and saw during my last episode when I lost consciousness. Consuming fire. I will, I will heal, you heal you if you call upon my name. But hear, but hear me, me clearly. Death, death, death is knocking on our family door. Father, Father is about to take his life. This is, this is not, not my own making. It is the plan of the enemy. He has, he has been, been deceived, blinded by the enemy, by the enemy to, believe to believe that he cannot climb a valley. 
but tell, but tell him, him. Tell him. Powering, powering lessons, lessons are learned in the valley. I was so scared. I didn't even know what was going on. I looked down and saw my lifeless body and how everybody panicked. So I asked Emmanuel to bring the Sunday school teachers here to tell me if it was just a dream. I can't face the trauma any longer. Failed in marriage. Son's failing health. Empty bank account. Failed business. Look at the sign. It says for sale. And that's the only roof over our head. And it is going. Suicide appears to be the only viable option. Or two. Why don't you share the struggles with me? I would made my mind up before we reconnected. Besides, I don't see no way out. Joe, now, especially now that the truth is out, what is your plan? I honestly don't know. But do you believe that your son did not make up that story? I honestly do. I think I know what we should do. Good. Mm -hmm. We must fast and pray. Joe, I agree with Bright. We must fast and pray. And pray violently. And we must start right now. Yes, right now. But first, Mr. Hayford, you must give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. The author and finisher of our faith. The one who paid the debt by his blood on the cross of Calvary. He alone must be your Lord and Savior. Mr. Hayford, are you ready to give your life to Jesus? Steve, what exactly did you see when you said that your soul left your body? Mom? It was as if like my shadow lifted out of my body. I felt no more pain, no more sorrow. Hmm. I felt a lot of peace and ease. And then I was lifted up to this radiating but huge fire started talking. Really? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God indeed. Jesus said, from the mouth of children and infants, he has ordained praise. Mm -hmm. Now God is unraveling his mystery through children. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation through Steve. And now, the Bible confirms in Hebrews 12, 29 that God is a consuming fire. And the verse before then ended with a call that we should worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. And Deuteronomy 4, 24 says, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God, which means He alone must be worshipped, mm. or else, we will face the wrath of a jealous God. He will not share his glory with any man. What exactly does it mean to be a consuming fire? According to Psalm 97.3, the Bible says, Fire goes before him to consume his foes on every side. And because he is our God, he will consume his foes, who happens to be our foes on every side. So... Fire goes before him, and he consumes his foes on every side. What does this mean for me now? Is it true that my husband wants to take his life? What you should do now? Run to God. Embrace him. Surrender your life to him. Mm. And concerning the revelation regarding your husband's plan suicide, we don't know at this point what he has planned to do. But let us wait and hear from the men who are meeting with him right now. And whatever the case may be, God can heal if you call upon him. Your son said so. Yes, Steve did say that the voice could heal if he is called upon. Good, good. But first, you have to believe in him. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the only way to the Father. 
the consuming fire. Once you believe, once you confess Jesus is Lord, and you believe, and you truly believe in your heart, when you call upon him, he will answer you. I'm ready. Praise the Lord. Please yes. pray for me. Good decision. Okay, let us pray. Turn your hand. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the life of Ephod. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray for the Ephod family. One brother and sister was even brought to the church. I want us to pray that God should heal their finances. And I want us to pray that God should intervene in their marriage. And I want us to pray for their son, Steve, that God should heal him. And your life is about to dim, dim, and die off. I see, I see, you even know my name, you wicked demon. My Bible tells me in James 4 verse 7, Submit yourself to the Lord, resist the devil and he shall flee. Lord, Lord Almighty, I submit myself unto you today. Take out total control. <laughs> you can look around. Today is your last day on earth. I know the day you were born. Your mom's name is Beatrice, and your dad's name is Jerome. And today is your last day on earth. I shall not die, but I shall live to proclaim what the Lord has done. You crossed the line. You cannot rescue the Hathods. They are mine, and you shall go down with them. And lastly, I will take you. Shut up, you liar, Bifu. It is written in the book of Isaiah 54 verse 17 that no weapon fashion against me shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment is condemned. It is written in the book of Psalms that the fire goes before them and consumes all the enemies on all sides. I believe that my God is a consuming fire. Therefore, you evil one, I declare you consumed in the name of Jesus. I believe in the word of God in Hebrews 12, 29, that God's consuming fire. I declare you consumed by that consuming fire in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Shall we pray? Uh. Dear Lord, we just thank you for restoring our marriage, Lord God, and bringing us back together, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you that with your help, we've defeated Satan. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What just happened is a miracle, the handiwork of God. We ran every test possible, and everything about him looks perfect right now. We don't know what changed. We've never seen anything like this before. AOG confirmed. Doctor, what does that mean? It stands for Act of God. That is where science ends and God begins where humanity's power ends and divinity takes over and defies human rationality. I fear you, Lord. And Doc, that is just a part of the story. Our marriage has never been sweeter. All of the charges have been dropped against my husband. And that means... My business is back in business. My house is back as a home. We now have Jesus! you are saying that is the secret that i have been missing to turn my morning into dancing uh, i've been looking in the wrong direction my life needs a lot of correction now tell me what can i do so i can enjoy the privilege to young man get on your knees and say lord i'm begging you please i pray i don't want to take another step until you are with me all the way a brand new beginning fight my battle so i can start winning so that one day i will join my brother to say Jehovah, my side. 